my name is Benjamin Schultz, and I'm an ETC at Morrison Academy, Taizong, Taiwan. In this short video tutorial, I'd like to show you how you can integrate Doctopus and Gubrick within Google Classroom. It should help make grading a lot easier and help students to see what they're graded on and why they receive the score they received. So, let's get started. So, we're going to first go uh, to my drive. Um, I would like you to open a new spreadsheet. And you can name it whatever you want, but um, let's just say I'll put grades, or test grades, uh, or grades for now, grades. And um, so you probably know this already that uh, Dr. Puss and Gubrick, they're all add-ons or extensions. But before we go to that, I almost forgot something, um, go to your Google drop-down menu here, your app menu, and I want, to go, want you to go all the way down to Classroom. There's a few things you need to know. Since this is integrating with Classroom, you're going to need to have Classroom set up. So you're going to need to have a class for, uh, th for this instance. It's going to be Web Design. It's the main class I teach. And you, need to, and you need to set up an assignment. So let's see. That's the business website. We're going to go all the way down to, to our uh, deep web reflection paper. So on this, uh, make sure you set it up, have the links you need, and make sure you have um, the actual paper or the actual... Google document, Google document that your students are going to need to look at and copy to turn in. And students, they need to actually click on this. They need to actually click on the document for it to actually to create a folder in Google Drive and for uh, where all the work is turned in and where Doctopus can draw their information from. So if you're a student, make sure you go to the assignment either here or when you click on the assignment, when you click on the assignment here. Uh, make sure you click on, or they, they go to the instruction area, and they click on the assignment, and make sure that it loads completely. So after that's done, or make sure your classroom set up the assignment set up, and students click into it, or a day before, maybe an hour before it's due, or right, be right after it's due, you open up a spreadsheet, and we're going to go to add-ons, and you're going to get add-ons. Click on that, I mean. And in the search bar, I want you to click Doctopus, and it's already showed up there, but let's just click on it. After it shows up, um, I want you to, uh, it should be from New Visions Cloud Lab, Doctopus. Click on the plus sign for free. It's going to ask you to allow it, and by all means, do allow it. And give it a few seconds to load. It's going to start working, and it should pop up with a successful installation sign and on the right hand side here it should start to load yes your Doctopus panel so after it loads um, you want to select a roster actually you're gonna that's the main thing but that's previously because Doctopus came out before classroom and you could create rosters for classes etc etc but now since there's classroom and this is a classroom tutorial I want you to just click on ingest Google CR assignment Google classroom assignment it's going to think, it's going to draw, go to your account, go to your classroom. It's going to find all the classes. Give it a few seconds to load, and we're going to select class. There's a few here. And it's going to be Web Design 2015 and 2016 first semester. I'm going to click on that guy right there. And select assignment. So this was the dark web reflection paper. So click on that. It's going to actually start to draw information from classroom. If you notice here um, on your sheet, it's all blank. At the bottom here, a new sheet should appear with, uh, after a few more seconds uh, with ingested information. Sometimes this takes a longer time. And as you can see, it's taken longer than usual here. I wonder if it's because of my location and my internet connection. But good, okay. So it took a little long, but it's found eight turned in files for this assignment. Now, personally, I would, since I want to grade these, I will only ingest files that are turned in. You can also grab files I think students have in there that just put in there or put on in classroom that are ready for a turn in but not turned in yet. So I'm going to click only ingest files that are turned in, click ingest assignment. And as you can see here, the other sheet just showed up at the bottom here. Let's 
give me some time. It's going to take a while. And yes, it moves you to the sheet there with the ingested information, which is great. So as you see here, you have your student's first name, last name, email, their file key, file name, and the file link, which is very important. And now your Doctopus panel should have changed. Um, you can refresh edits and counts. You can look for new submissions, which is very helpful when students turn things in late or they forget for a while or you don't know they haven't turned it in yet. Um, you can also add a code feature. Uh, we're just going to move straight on to attaching a Gubrick. Now, uh, you'll click on Attach Gubrick. Give it some time. Now, Gubrick is a Google Chrome extension, as I mentioned before. So I don't have that installed, so I'm going to need to click on that. And it should pop you up with Gubrick Web App Launcher. And once again, you want to add that to Chrome. And you want to add extension. And boo, it's installed. And once again, once, if you installed it successfully, it should show up in the right-hand corner next to your stars for your bookmark bars, our bookmarking pages, that star. And then it says it's visible when the extension can act on the current page, which is great. So you can press close. And oh, I'm going to press close again. I'm going to close this tab. I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to click on grading for dark web essays. This is a rubric I created. It's actually a spreadsheet, a separate spreadsheet. I'm going to attach a rubric. While it's attaching, I want to show you what the rubric looks like actually. So I'm going to type in, go to my Google Drive and type in grading uh, rubric for dark web essays. So I'm going to click on that just to give you an overview of what the rubric needs to be like because there's a specific format that, of rubrics that Gubrick can take in or turn into a Gubrick. So as you can see here, my column and row A1 are uh, column A and one row, or column one and row A, or yeah, this area right here, it's blank. All rubrics that you push into or ingest into Gubrick has to be blank. And starting from B down, you can have numbers, uh, and from two down, you can have your topics. As you can see here, I have focus on topic, actually effects, all this stuff here, rhythm, you name it. So this is just an example of a rubric. It has to be in this format. You can have, I think, up to as many numbers as you want and as up to as many categories as you want also. So going back to grades, as you can see here, it attached the rubric. So it says grading rubric for dark web essays is attached, which is great. Now, how do you actually start grading these things here? So um, our papers here. I first click on a link to a student's, ass to, to a student's assignment. After getting into a student's assignment, you want to click this eyeball here, the Gubrick eyeball icon. And it's going to open a new web tab. So for, for comparison, this is usually how you look at a document. With Gubrick, it's going to open a top panel with your rubric and your student's assignment on the bottom. So today we're taking the first closest tab. We're looking at Lindsay Tan's dark web reflection. And as you can see, I can click on um, each topic or category, I can give them up to up to four or one to four since that's my range. You can also do 3.5. It works like that and saves them temporarily, which is great. So if you come back to this in the future, the scores are remembered. Really nice, 1.5 for that. I think that's good. Sequencing one, flow and rhythm. She did a good job with that. Three, word choice. This is not bad. So 3.5. You know, she did it overall. Overall, she did a good job. And so that's the basics of how you do use Gubrick for grading. The great, another great part of Gubrick is you can comment. So I typed here nicely done. Uh, you can type whatever you want and it attaches it later, which will take a look in a few minutes or probably in a minute or two. The other great thing with uh, Gubrick is you can attach an audio file or an audio comment. So if I click on this guy right here. Lindsay, I liked your paper. Um, I think you did a good job overall, but I'd like to hear more thoughts in the future on your dark web reflection. Thank you. Then just press pause here and I'll play it for you. See here. Lindsay, I liked your paper. Um, I think you did a good job overall, but I'd like to hear more thoughts in the future on your dark web reflection. Thank you. Then just press pause here. As you can see, it does record and you can upload it to Google Drive or you can trash it. Right now I'm just going to trash it because we're not going to need this and I already graded her paper already. So a few other things here. Um, 
You can also email scores to Lindsay Tan, which is usually what I do just to, just to notify them. Um, and you can also auto advance on submit. When you click this and you press submit, it's going to go to the next student turned in assignment. Since I already graded that, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to press next just to show you. So this is an upgrade from the previous doc to post. It wouldn't open in the same tab even, I think. So this is great. And as you can see, this is Christopher's uh, reflection. And once again, the rubric appears on top and his paper's on the bottom. It's great. Um, that's, you can once again comment, auto, audio comment. And one other thing, you see this little indented or highlighted gray area? If you click that, it actually hides the rubric so you have more space for the paper. Now, uh, getting back to the rubric, after you submit this to a student and turn it emails to them, your, it actually comes back, uh, it attaches a rubric to the bottom of their assignment and it shows you the date and time when you submitted it to the student. And if you look at the rubric here, it shows uh, highlighted areas that I selected. I thought he did a good job, and Christopher, he really did a good job pretty much on everything. He really likes this class, and he puts in a lot of time. And my comments are on the bottom. It says, great job, Chris. Enjoyed reading your reflection. So everything you do in the top here, it gets added to the bottom after you attach the rubric to the grading and all that. So that's uh, Gubrick, Doctopus, um, and Classroom in a nutshell. I'm trying to think if there's any reminders here or things you need to keep in mind. One thing um, I notice, um, or a disclaimer from the maker, uh, once you add this, or when you send these back to the students, their grades are not submitted. You have to do that manually in uh, whichever grading system or software you use, or you just manu manually still have to put the grades into Classroom, which is still, I guess, maybe a little pain, but at least you can attach rubrics to your assignments and grade them according to that, and it makes things a lot easier. So I hope this helps, and I hope your teaching uh, becomes easier and students enjoy it more with seeing your comments and rubrics on their papers and audio comments, which is kind of cool. And yeah, I just hope all in all you become a better educator, and this helps you with the future. Thanks.